What's up YouTube, Jeff back again. And today, another very exciting Samsung video for you guys. Today, we're gonna to be talking about battery life. Whenever a new phone comes out, battery life is always a hot topic in the comments. There's always a lot of questions about what kind of battery life I'm getting, how to extend battery life. So today, I'm gonna to give you guys some tips on how to extend your battery life. Now, I don't do all of these things. Some of these things I think are kind of crazy to do because this is a very expensive phone, obviously, the Galaxy S23 Ultra. You know, this is cost you between 1200 and, you know, 1600 bucks depending on the storage size. I don't think it's correct to turn off every single feature on your device. I'm just going to give you some tips that you could implement that would work, but keep in mind, it's not that I recommend enabling all these things. So, the very first culprit when it comes to poor battery life is definitely the display. So I've went over some of these before, but if you want to start solving some of your battery life issues, if you have battery life issues, which I don't, the battery life has been great for me on the S23 Ultra. It's been the best battery life I've ever had on a Samsung phone. You could start by looking at the display and kind of deciding if you could turn some of these features down or turn some of these features off. The first thing you could do is to go in here and turn dark mode on because dark mode, since this is an AMOLED display, will decrease the amount of power that you're using because it doesn't have to light as many pixels. That's just very simple. Brightness, of course, you could manually turn your brightness down. I like adaptive brightness because, of course, then when you're outside in the bright sunlight, which is very common here in Arizona, then it's, you know, doesn't make it hard to see. But if you do want to manually set your brightness and keep it fairly low, that will also, of course, save you some battery. Motion smoothness, if you want to save quite a lot of battery, you can change this from adaptive to standard. But again, this adaptive smoothness, which is the 120 hertz refresh rate when you're scrolling through things like your Twitter and Instagram, is one of the flagship features of the S23 Ultra. I've actually noticed that if you set it to standard, you can save a chunk of battery life, but it also really decreases the experience that I have with the phone. So I choose not to do that personally. The next thing is down here, screen resolution. And this is one where you could save some battery, but I've actually noticed that it's not that big of a difference and it isn't really that big of noticeable either if you change it. So the phone comes set at FHD+, plus, which is 2316 by 1080 resolution by default. But you can, of course, bump it up to the full 3088 plus, uh, times 1440, which is WQHD+. Plus. Uh, that's what Samsung calls it. If you bump it up, it is going to drain a little more battery. But I've never noticed it be like substantially more battery, uh, honestly. They say more battery use when you do it. But it really is maybe only an extra 2 or 3% per day which I personally find having the extra resolution matters to me enough that I would like to keep it there in certain scenarios. But if you do bump it down to FHD+, you're probably not gonna notice it in most things. Uh, if you're used to using really high resolution devices, which I do on a daily basis, my Tab S8 Ultra, my MacBook Pro, my 16 inch MacBook Pro, uh, I'm used to seeing super high res screens. So if I don't have the high res, I do notice it on occasion, especially in things like text. So those are the biggest things here in display that can save you some battery life. Now let's go, of course, to the next most obvious place to, you know, save battery life, which would be the battery and device care menu. So I've talked about some of these before, but let's go through them again. The first one at the very bottom, which could actually save you some battery life and also streamline the performance of your phone, is the auto optimization option. Uh, this will basically allow your phone to restart itself when you're not using it, close background apps, clean up the memory, organize some of those cache files. This is done when you're not using the phone, it automatically learns when you're not most likely to be using it. Then it'll go ahead and do this right away so you don't lose any time with your device. This will help your battery life and also make it faster. So I'd say there's no downsides to turning that on in my personal opinion. Now, if you go up here into the battery menu, there's a couple of things. First of all, you can turn power saving mode on, but this is really more of something that I would only recommend once you start getting low on battery life for the day. I don't recommend turning this on, you know, all day because that's taking away a lot of the features of your phone. You're always on display is gone. Your CPU is gone. Uh, decreased brightness, limit apps and home screen usage. You can turn these on in a per app, you know, per setting basis. But if you turn all of this on all day, you're basically not having an ultra phone anymore, which is kind of a bummer. But you can turn it on if you get to a situation where you notice, oh, no, I've got like 20 percent left and I really need to get home so I can charge or something. Or if you're out on a Friday night, you could turn that on. And it is a great feature to have there. Now, perhaps more importantly is background usage limits. I talked about this in a previous video, and this is where you really got to make a decision. I don't like to have my social media and my email apps sleeping because I don't want to miss real-time notifications. It's important for my work. It's important for my work on YouTube because I get notifications for my YouTube channel, comments from you guys, Twitter, 
Uh, I post a lot of stuff there for the channel. And also for my regular day job, I do a lot of email. But if you put this on, so if you turn this feature on, limit background usage, whenever apps are not being used, they'll get put to sleep. Sometimes you can miss out on notifications because of this, but it does save substantial battery. So if you want to save the most battery, it is something you can leave on. You just might miss out on some real-time um, information there. Now, if you go down here to where it says more battery settings, you can also make sure you have adaptive battery on. This is on by default. Uh, once again, the reason I turn this off is because I don't want to have missed notifications. A tiny adaptive battery on can also lead to you not getting real-time notifications for certain apps. So if you want the best battery life, definitely turn it on. But like I said, I've had amazing battery life. I've been getting about seven hours screen on time with my mixed usage of 5G and Wi-Fi, which is really good. This is perhaps the most important setting in this whole entire video, which is the performance profile. The performance profile, you can turn it from standard to light, which prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. This is making sure your phone's not using all those really big power hungry cores that is in this processor and it allows you to extend the battery life significantly. This of course will make sure that you get really good battery life. And this also doesn't affect the real time notification situation. This is just making sure that the cooling efficiency is being prioritized over speed. And I haven't noticed any hiccups with this either. You would think that maybe like you would have a little more lag with animations or closing an app or something like that or switching between apps, multitasking. I've noticed none of that. So basically, this being turned on, I think, is the most important thing if you want to save battery life. I went from going from standard the first few days I was using the phone to light, and I got an extra about an hour and a half battery life, which brought me to my current number of seven hours, even by turning off adaptive battery, turning off the background usage limits, and all that stuff. You can also try on protect battery. This is if you're keeping your phone for a long time. This will make sure that it limits the maximum charge to 85%. That can also be kind of annoying, though, if you need a full charge. Uh, if you're going to be out and about all day, you need that extra 15%, but it will make sure that your phone retains its maximum charge for a longer period of time. So if you're going to upgrade sooner than, say, two years, I would probably recommend turning that on. Now, back in here, if you tap on this and go usage since last charge, you can also see all the apps that are using your battery. I do want to comment on that just a second as well, because people also ask what apps are most power hungry. Well, you can find that out right here. And of course, there's some very obvious things you can learn from these battery usages as well. Uh, for instance, if you look at mine today, uh, it's been a light day of use for me. I had to do some work today and I teach at the university, so I can't have my phone on. 64%, two hours and 13 minutes screen on time. But I also use Android Auto when I drove into work today, which used Google Maps, uh, which also, you know, I use Bluetooth for Spotify and you see Android Auto right there. Wireless Android Auto drives strains a lot of battery. So if you look at what's using your battery most of the time, it's going to be one UI home is just navigating around the UI. But usually it's going to be social media apps, Bluetooth usage, apps like Spotify, things like that, maps, which use GPS, of course, uh, or something like Android Auto, which is not only using the Bluetooth, but it's also pulling information from your phone to project that wirelessly on your screen in your car, because I have wireless Android Auto uh, in my SUV. Now, you notice I actually watch a decent amount of videos and stuff. Most of my video apps don't even show up down here, even if you watch quite a bit of content. YouTube Studio shows up because I answer notifications all day. So one thing you can do, if you go back to the apps menu, if you notice that an app is particularly draining a lot of your battery, you can go into that application and you can actually manually play around with the battery settings. So let's go to, I don't know, I think I think of one, Instagram. If you go into the battery settings in Instagram, you can change this. It's got unrestricted, optimized, or restricted. Now, this will make sure that if it's optimized, it basically will, it can delay your notifications. Like I talked about before, it can delay your notifications, but you will get better battery life. If you turn unrestricted on, it'll make sure you get real-time notifications for something like social media, but the battery life will be worse. And if you have really bad battery life from an app and you don't need that app to be running all the time, you could of course either uninstall it or turn on restricted mode so that when it's not actively running, it's not doing anything crazy in the background. But of course, you're gonna find that things like social media, Facebook, those are just naturally very power hungry apps. Uh, they're also light versions of like the Facebook app, like Facebook Messenger Lite, Facebook Lite, you can actually go to the Play Store. The Facebook Lite, Facebook Messenger Lite, uh, this will allow you to install, 
basically a lighter version of Facebook that doesn't take up as much resources, as much battery. Uh, I used this for a long time. I may even go back to it because Facebook, I'll be honest, if you use Facebook a lot, I don't use it as much anymore. It will drain your battery like crazy, probably more than almost any other app, social media app that's out there. So it's definitely something to think about. Um, the other thing you could do is if you are using dark mode, I don't have it done today, but you could install a dark wallpaper. Um, there's a lot of good wallpapers from Wallpaperly, which I've shown before, like these dark wallpapers right here. These are awesome because they will also allow you to get more usage out of that AMOLED display. Uh, let's talk about something else, the always on display. Of course, this drains battery. I like to use the always on display. And uh, I even like to use something that probably uses even more battery, which is the image clock. So obviously, if you are indeed on the image clock, that's gonna take even more battery. Uh, notice how if you wanna scan your fingerprint, you do have to move the S Pen tip away, which is kind of interesting, if anyone's never seen that before. So if you go into the settings, and you go to lock screen really quick, let's go to lock screen, and you go to always on display, one thing I would highly recommend is that you either choose show as scheduled, like from 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. That way it's not showing while you're sleeping for one thing, but it also will not be draining battery in case you forget to charge it or something like that. But the other thing is to make sure that you have this turned on right here. The auto brightness turned on is really a good idea because that way if you are in a situation uh, where you have direct sunlight on it, it won't necessarily drain as much batteries if you crank it up to the maximum all the time. Because what a lot of people do is they turn this off and you can see when auto brightness is off, you can adjust it manually by double tapping the clock. But most people crank it up to the maximum because they want to see the always on display better. But it's actually super bright to be running it all the time. And that ends up draining your battery at an even higher level. Like I said, if you use the image clock, which I use, if you've never seen it before, you can add a picture from your gallery, um, that will take extra battery as well. So you just have to decide if you're okay with that trade-off. The last thing I want to mention here is if you go into advanced features and you go into motions and gestures, one thing that you might want to consider is all of these different gestures, which I like a lot of them, but if you don't use them, like palm swipe to capture, um, if you don't use this one specifically, this one's turned off by default, this one will drain quite a bit of battery, keep screen on while viewing. Um, and then all these like mute with gestures, alert when pick up, these actually take some battery life because they do require your phone to be standing by to take an action at all times when it's waiting for you to input these things. So keep in mind that if you do use these things, uh, they are gonna drain a little bit more battery and if there's any gestures you don't want, you can turn those off and save a little bit of battery at the end of the day. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. There's of course lots of things you can do that will give you a little bit better battery life, but these are the main ones that I've used over time that I feel like really give me improved battery life and I think they're worth using. There are some of course that you, know, you could do, but they're not really worth using in my personal opinion because you won't really see that improved performance that really makes it worth it versus turning off all these features on your really, really nice phone. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification icon for future videos like this. I really appreciate you guys checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.